in the previous video, we got ourselves to where from the lobby, we're able to start the session and all of the connected players will be sent and we will be loaded to this map and playing together. Well, any map that we have selected actually. So I figured this would be a kind of a good point to at least start working on some of the gameplay aspects. So by that, I mean, we're going to be creating just the game mode class, as well as the next thing we'll be working on is creating spawn points. So pretty much our initial spawn points. Currently, we have this network player start. And if we look at the game mode, ignore this. This is for a point that I'm about to make here in this minute. We get our default pawn class. And essentially what this does is it spawns the default class at this network player start. And we simply possess it. Well, that's great and all, but we want to have our own kind of system to control our spawning as well as kind of our final spawn, so to speak. Like uh, when players die and the new round starts, we want them to respawn on X point. So we can go ahead and begin on that. The point I want to make real quick, actually. So in the this is just the default game mode. We're going to be overriding the post login function as well as begin play in our new game mode. But I wanted to make a point here. So when we create our game mode, I mean our uh, our spawn point class, what we're going to want to do is inside of begin like for example, and begin play, get all of the actors of that type and store them inside an array. So that way we have access to all of our spawn points. Now that would work in something like a dedicated server where clients are the first client's going to be joining like just later down the road at X time. But it's not really going to work for us when we're also hosting it. For example, begin play, I mean, a post login runs before begin play. So for example, if I go ahead and launch the map, you'll see post login being printed out before begin play does. Post login, game mode, begin play, game mode. So first, second. So we're going to have to pretty much create a little initial check inside of post login to get our class, our spawn point classes. So in case anyone asks why, that's why. So let's begin. In our C++ classes, go to war to war, public, Nazi zombie, game. Here I'm going to create our game mode. Well, actually, let's see. Pretty much all the functionality. Yeah, I think we're just going to go with game mode base. Yep. All right. So let's give this a name. Nazi zombie game mode. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other scenarios where we would want to change it to something else, but that's all I can really think of. So let's go ahead and create that class, and then we will create the class for our spawn point. Just the game mode. I'm going to go ahead and just undo, well, get rid of the overrides in this setup here. I'm going to create the other class. So if we show our classes, search for target, target point. Well, let's call this, um, let's see, player, or Nazi zombie player spawn point. Okay. 
Let's see, that is here. All right, let's go ahead and fix the includes real quick. It's going to be project name. Nazi zombie game, then Nazi zombie player spawn point dot h. And I'm going to copy that. What's wrong with you? Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this over to our game mode. Change it to Nazi Zombie Game Mode. Okay. So we have both of our includes now. Let's see here. Give you the same path. I believe I spelled it right. Nope, oh, everyone was just throwing a fit. So I'm going to go ahead and compile. Eventually. There we go. And I'm going to have to reload my editor project real quick. And we should see our two classes that we just created. All right. There we are. We have our game mode and our spawn point. So now that those are created, in the next video, we will be going through and setting up the actual spawn points and i'll explain their usages in that one so i will see you then